I'm sure you've all heard the popular advice that you should avoid eating yellow snow. But what about blue snow? You see, earlier this winter I was out for a walk in the woods when I stumbled upon a blue patch on the forest floor. Now, I'm used to seeing small spots of bluish-purple droppings left behind by birds, presumably after they've gorged themselves on the berries that still cling to the shrubs and bushes even well into the winter. But this patch was different. It looked like someone had spilled about a half a cup of windshield wiper fluid directly onto the snow. In fact, if I'd made this discovery in a parking lot with the blue patch straddled between a set of tire tracks, that's exactly what I would have assumed. But instead, I was nearly a kilometer back into our forest, just on the edge of a clearing. And rather than tire tracks, the only prints other than my own seemed to be left behind by a small animal. So I snapped a photo and continued on with my walk, thinking that this oddity was just a one-off that had some logical explanation, but one that would likely remain unknown to me. But then, a little further down the trail, I was shocked to find a second blue patch, nearly identical to the first. So now, thoroughly intrigued, but no less in the dark, I began actively searching for more blue patches, as I slowly made my way back to the house. By the time I reached our back steps, it was beginning to look like this mystery would remain unsolved forever. But just then, I found a third blue patch. This one quite a bit smaller than the previous two, but otherwise very similar. However, this time there was an additional clue. A small, unmistakable pile of rabbit droppings. Aha! My culprit had been identified. Or at least I'd narrowed it down to a species. Now, among other things, our property is home to a very healthy population of eastern cottontail rabbits, and so their tracks and droppings are a pretty common sight. In fact, if these patches had been dark yellow, I wouldn't have given them a second thought. But blue rabbit pee? Surely this couldn't be a thing, could it? Well, as it turns out, it could, depending on what they eat. You see, in the warmer months, wild rabbits have access to a veritable smorgasbord of lush green vegetation. But in the winter, their diet becomes quite a bit more restricted, primarily consisting of the buds, stems, and bark of small trees and shrubs. And from what we've read, one woody plant in particular seems to be the cause of the blue pea. But before we get into that, I should mention that though we did find a number of people talking about this online, it mostly came in the form of blog posts from other people who, like us, were simply interested in this natural phenomenon observed on their own property. That said, several of the bloggers referenced a biologist here in Canada. And so, after a bit more digging, I found an article by Dr. Frederick Schuler, in which he reports on some of his experimentation with blue rabbit pee from back in the 90s. And by sheer coincidence, not only was he still located here in Canada, but he actually lives within a 30-minute drive of our house. So, after a phone call and a few email exchanges, Fred graciously agreed to meet with me in person. Okay, I'm Fred Schuler. And we've lived here in Bishop's Mills since 1978. We say that we're unemployable nomadic peasant scholars. Now, despite his humble introduction, Fred is a very successful biologist. And along with his artist wife, Alita Karstad, they've been studying and documenting the changes in our local ecology for longer than I've been alive. But now let's get back to the blue pea and how they first discovered some around this apple tree. And this is the, what we now call the Duchess of Oldenburg tree because we got it identified by the, the husband lab at the University of Guelph. And in 1990, we'd cut a bunch of branches in pruning it and just left them on the, the snow around the tree. And rabbits came in, and as rabbits love apple branches, they were chewing them up. And if you've ever seen rabbit pee, it, it makes a brown stain on the snow. Here were some of these stains that were just looked like windshield washer fluid, bright, bright blue, and we had no idea what was going on. Because wild rabbits nibble on apple trees all the time, and it never results in blue urine. So that couldn't be the cause. But that's when they explored a little further into the woods, and noticed that more blue patches were concentrated around where the rabbits were feeding on the uh, the cathartic buckthorn, a European buckthorn, or whichever English name you want to use for Rhamnus cathartica. Now, Rhamnus cathartica, or common buckthorn, is non-native to North America, which is likely why it's also known as European buckthorn. But since being introduced in the late 1800s, it quickly spread across much of the northern half of the continent. Here in Canada, it grows quite happily all the way from Nova Scotia to Saskatchewan, and is typically considered to be an invasive species. And then and we had goats and rabbits at, at various times through the years, and, and we largely fed the goats on, on buckthorn that we'd cut 
to control it as an invasive species, and their pea was bright blue, too. So by trying different food sources with their domesticated animals, Fred and Alita quickly concluded that common buckthorn was indeed the cause. Which meant that if this was to be a plausible explanation for our blue patches, then I should be able to find plenty of common buckthorn growing around our property as well. Now, as usual, it's a little more difficult to identify them in the winter once the leaves have fallen. But from what I understand, there are still a few telltale signs. For starters, it generally ranges in size from a large shrub to a small tree, and often grows in dense thickets. Its bark is grayish-brown on the outside, but if you slice into it, the cambium layer is dark orange rather than green. On the branches, the leaf buds are arranged in nearly opposite pairs, and between them, at the tips, you'll usually find a sharp thorn. However, perhaps the most obvious sign of common buckthorn is the dense clusters of black berries that remain even in winter. And coincidentally, it's often when eating those berries in particular that our birds produce the purple droppings I mentioned earlier. So you might expect that the blue patches were caused by rabbits who'd recently eaten berries, but that's the thing. Well, with the domestic rabbits, we did try to feed them the, the berries and see if that produced blue pea, and it didn't. So it seems to only be the twigs. And I don't know about the, about the foliage, because we don't have snow when there's leaves on the trees. And we should have done it with newspaper, but we didn't. So the theory is that there's a phytochemical present in the wood and bark of the common buckthorn that passes through the digestive system of rabbits and goats and is released in their urine. But interestingly, direct from the animal, the urine is still a normal shade of yellowy brown. And then we noticed that it only turned blue after it had been exposed to the sun. And, and we did some experiments with, with rabbits. We put um, newspaper in the cage with them and then exposed that to the sun and noticed that it turned blue when it was exposed to the sunlight. So it's some kind of photochemical reaction, but we haven't ever gotten any blue pea snow together and gotten it into Ottawa to the biochemists to see what the chemicals might be or if there was anything they could identify. So unfortunately, that's about as far as we can take this explanation for now. But I was curious if the buckthorn might affect the urine of other animals as well. You know, I can't see why it wouldn't. It just goes through a mammalian kidney and comes out. And, and goats and rabbits, they both reprocess their food but the goats do it by chewing their cud, and the rabbits do it by re-eating their feces, so it's not like they have exactly the same digestive system. I've suggested trying it on human subjects, but the wife doesn't approve of that. Um, so I haven't actually done it myself to see if my pee turns blue in the sun after I've eaten it. And despite Fred's willingness for self-experimentation, he was also quick to note that you should not actually try to eat buckthorn because it's considered to be toxic for humans. In fact, upon its consumption, most animals are likely to experience stomach cramps and a laxative effect. That's actually where cathartic comes from in its Latin name, and also why one of the many other common names is purging buckthorn. But with that in mind, then why on earth would the rabbits want to eat it? The rabbits don't really prefer it compared to apple or um, dogwood or some of the other shrubs. And so we've mostly, in the past, mostly seen it when there's been years of high rabbit populations and, and they really didn't have any choice. And so that's likely why the blue patches are so rarely seen and why they've not really been studied in a lab. Because rabbits don't like eating common buckthorn, and any time they do, it's usually late in the winter once their preferred food sources become scarce or during years when the rabbit population is larger than usual. However, despite the fact that it turns out we do have a fair amount of common buckthorn on our property, our rabbits still have plenty of other options here. So I have no idea why they'd already be resorting to Plan B, especially that early in the season. But either way, we'll continue to keep an eye out for more blue patches in the future. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. We were the Bishop's Mills Natural History Center. We now call ourselves the Chaos Corners Center for the study of one thing and another. And with a name like that, you might be wondering what exactly they do. I, I don't know, we just do what people ask us to do. So clearly Fred can be somewhat self-deprecating when talking about his own work. 
but I'd like to give him a huge thank you for taking part in this video and for sharing both his time and his experience. Among many other things, he and Alita have spent much of their lives studying and advocating for chorus frogs, salamanders, mollusks, and many other small creatures that tend to get overlooked when thinking about our effects on the environment. And as it turns out, they're also avid gardeners who, like us, do their best to work with nature rather than against it. So personally, I felt an instant connection when talking with Fred, and I hope to be able to learn more from him in the future. So if you enjoyed this style of video and would like to see more, please let us know in the comments. But in the meantime, for more information about them and their work, I've placed a link to Alita's blog in the description. Please check it out. Oh, and one more thing. As usual, this video took quite a while to put together, which is unfortunate for our channel's performance within the YouTube algorithm, but on the bright side, it does give us an opportunity to include a super quick update before we go. So we originally found the rabbit pea back in early January, but I also mentioned that we'd keep an eye out for more blue patches throughout the rest of the winter. Well, it's now the beginning of March, and I'm excited to report that just yesterday, we finally found another blue patch. But I don't think this one came from a rabbit. You see, while we were out for a walk in the field, Paula and I came upon this huge blue patch right in the middle of a well-used deer trail. And judging by both the volume of pee and also its proximity to a literal pile of deer droppings, I think this may lend some weight to Fred's assumption that common buckthorn would have a similar effect on other animals as well. And clearly the deer have been hungry too. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon.